Good morning, everyone. I'm Monique Tsang from the SIB uh, training group. And uh, today and tomorrow, we will have Federic Litsacek, who will uh, give the course on introduction to glycoinformatics. And uh, just so you know, this course is being taped, so please mute your audio. And I guess we'll be using the chat for questions. So over to you, Federic. Thank you, Monique. So the idea um, for this morning is that I will give you uh, an introduction on glycoinformatics to begin with. And then um, I will take um, some time to demo a few things that I have been talking about. Then I'll have a special focus on uh, glycoproteomics and the um, bioinformatics that goes with it. And then um, I think with some example of uh, um, a few more ideas and software, we'll probably reach the end of the morning. So I will start with uh, sharing my screen. And I think I will share everything and start here with my presentation. Okay, so I, the, the landscape is such that I think I'm going to reduce that to, um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about the uh, landscape and what we call the Glyce-based alliance you may have never heard of, but sorry. So I will start with some concerns, not that it's a uh, negative, but, and I would like to start with the example of proteomics. And so once upon a time in proteomics, the concern number one was to release data. And to release data was, so like almost 20 years ago, producing lots of lists of proteins. And uh, the longer the list, the better you were at the time. And the idea is that um, since the bioinformatics behind was using, for instance, the Uniprot database, still called Swissprot probably at the time, or just beginning uh, to be Uniprot, you had those long lists of protein names uh, with masses and uh, the peptides identified sometimes uh, not necessarily in that list and the accession number referring to that protein. Then time went on and the second concern of proteomics was data presentation. So how should we represent a proteome? So you had a lot of pie charts and the pie charts were actually defined as a function of the protein function. And um, there was alternatives where you had Venn diagrams showing how many proteins, how many um, peptides were matched from, um, from the databases and how, for instance, here comparing different search engines, you had different identifications. So there was some kind of input in trying to show the content of a proteome or the content of identification with some charts. And then concern number three was data visualization and of course data interpretation. And this is where uh, when the, um, the networks of interactions and the, all the proteins that were identified was really put together in a way that made sense from a biological point of view, 
so you can interpret the data and start building a scenario of what's happening uh, from the uh, in biology uh, when uh, you had a particular sample uh, to study. So this was a real evolution over a number of years. And this is a good example for us to start with because this evolution was powered by bioinformatics. Not only, of course, by technology. I'm not uh, putting aside a mass spectrometrist, putting a lot of effort in uh, identifying protein, but it wouldn't have happened if the search engines were not fine-tuned by bioinformaticians. And but most importantly, if the different people who were developing databases, data repositories to collect the peptides uh, were not speaking to one another, were not starting to de describe the data in the same way, agree on standards, create consortiums so that they would talk about the same things in the same terms or similar terms. So this is a very important aspect and it's a key to success in an omics field that different groups start shaping the way data is presented, visualized, interpreted as I just showed. Now, in glycomics, we are stuck with concern number one at the moment. We're still in the process of producing large tables with glycans. And I would say it's even without having solved concern number zero, which is to have a precise accession number for each of the structures, each of the glycans that are identified. So this is happening more and more, but not quite. So we still have a lot of publication in glycobiology journals where you have this sort of table. And if you are a bioinformatician, I can tell you it's hard because programs are not good at reading images. So all you get stuck with is looking at these pictures and trying to put them in a format which is machine readable which, and this step should be skipped, uh, and sh I mean, should be handled easily. And so we, we shouldn't have to do that. This is why we are trying with a number of people to go directly to concern number three, which is really the, the heart of the matter of what we're doing and, and being interested in biology and glycobiology. And we formed that Glyspace Alliance with a Japanese group, uh, our group in Switzerland and an American group under the uh, supervision of Nikki Packer, who is in Australia. So it's a very international alliance. And this is grouping. So the Glycosmos um, group in Japan, the Glygen uh, group in uh, the US, it's actually consortia. Uh, and uh, glycomics at Expasi in Switzerland. So this is possible because we speak the same language. We have ways of describing glycans. We can have several ways. We are happy to have ways. We are not ayatollahs telling you that it has to be one way and not any other way, but we are certainly narrowing down uh, the, the, the possibilities. We agree on a notation, for instance, the SNFG notation. It's a nomenclature of monosaccharides that is now more and more widely um, accepted so that we can describe a complicated molecule into a simplified cartoon that everybody can actually visualize easily. This is a way of describing a glycan composition. So when you don't know, so 
hexos are here. The, the, the white circle is a hexos and these are all the possible hexos. So uh, glucose, mannose, galactose, etc. So we are trying to shape this even um, um, here, the composition, we can count the exos by using hex as um, the, the shortened name, but it can be H. So this is a condensed way of saying it. So there are variation on the theme, but still we speak that language. We also try to, I mean, uh, you can see that a, lo a lot of us have published um, this paper in 2014 saying that we really need to standardize and systematize the way we study glycans so that computers can be helpful. So these are examples of the way you can uh, describe a glycan. This is a, a linear way to do it. Um, this is another linear way. This is a two-dimensional way. This is a, another text a way of doing it, another text way of doing it. And these are coexisting. They have been produced over the years. And the great thing is that the Japanese group has um, pro um, produced a glycan format converter so that you can actually translate from here to here to there, etc. So this, this table in that paper, it tells you the name of the standard, like IUPAC, which is linear ta uh, table, K um, KCF or GlycoCT, which are connection tables, other linear text and um, the, the properties. And so you can convert one format to the other. Another thing that has, has happened over the last 10 years is that um, if you are familiar with other omics, you know that there, there are standards, especially in proteomics, for instance, there's the MIAPI uh, standard to describe a, uh, a mass spectrometry experiment. So it's called the Proteome Standard Initiative. They have other standards. It's uh, related to the Miami standard that was proposed in transcriptomics already 20, uh, 20 years ago. So we have the Mirage. Um, standard. Whoops. Sorry. The Mirage standard, which is the minimum information required for a glycomics experiment. And so um, there's a consortium. Also, there's a, a committee sort of group of uh, several people hosted by the Belstein Institute. So this is really the initiative of the Belstein Institute that said, you, we, we need that um, standard for, glycoprote for glycomics and now glycoproteomics. So there are reporting guidelines for glycan sample preparation for mass spectrometry uh, experiments, mass spectrometry analysis, mass spectrom uh, glycan array. And so really, this is evolving and we're producing um, these guidelines so that people who are reporting experiments can do it in a similar way so that the bioinformatics can act behind that. We also share a concern for um, presenting and modeling the data uh, in, uh, in a common way. So we have uh, uh, chosen to go for the semantic web technologies because in bioinformatics, this is becoming extremely common. Um, so ontologies are defined so that this is the model of the data. And this is very useful then to cross talk with a database like Uniprop because Uniprop is, has an RDF model and then we can query the database is in a much more detailed way. And in glycomics, glyc um, I mean, glycoinformatics, we are uh, producing those ontologies. Here, this is an example of the uh, glyco ontology for glycoconjugates that was just recently published. And so this is also a work ongoing. So we speak the same language and we can really exchange data 
and uh, information annotation between our different sites. So this is the Glycosmos um, homepage and we'll have a, a quick look at what's there. This is the Glygen homepage and I'll go very quickly on that as well. And here, the choice that we made, so Glycosmos was, is dedicated to um, the, the Japanese resources that are in Japan by definition. And um, it's really focused on glycoinformatics and glycobiology data. Glygen is also totally focused on um, glycobiology and uh, trying to connect a lot with the NCBI. So that's uh, Glygen is, a, is, is in a very privileged situation to be uh, cross-referencing more and more with NCBI resources. And this is what I had in mind with glycomics at Expacy. I was using the fact that Expacy had a certain reputation since it was created in 1993, became the proteomics server in 2001. Uh, it was uh, really in 1993 and up to the turn of the century was dedicated to molecular biology. And then it evolved as a, um, a proteomics server and until uh, so that one of the um, uh, major change happened in uh, 2011 and this become became the SIB uh, Expasi server and having here a lot of different um, tabs in which each omic was described. So it was not the proteomic server anymore. It was also for genomics, for transcriptomics. And so we jumped onto that uh, opportunity to create the glycomics tab where we were presenting the data in the same way as in other tabs where you had the databases on the one hand and the tools on the other hand. And we published that um, description uh, in NCP at the time. And until 2020, this was glycomics at Exposy. Then Exposy decided to change, which is wonderful because it's actually a much uh, cleaner um, site uh, that was introduced last year. And there's no more tabs, really. You can actually tick boxes, you have a left menu here that is actually showing the, um, uh, the different parts that were uh, tabs before. The downside for us is that it's only concentrating on SIB resources. And as a result, uh, we can't talk about our partner resources as we used to in the uh, previous version. But I'll tell you a bit later uh, today um, that I'm going to, sorry, stop my phone from saying things. Um, so this is really the, um, the landscape and we have a certain division of labor. We are all concerned by data quality. We are also concerned by the integration of information. So at NCBI, but in any, uh, at EBI uh, as well. So we have specialties, respective specialties and the specialty of the American site is going towards automatic data curation. They also developed a, a glycomotif database um, based on our contribution also, we had one, but they sort of centralized it. The Glycosmos uh, specialty is really going into data submission, providing repositories where you can actually submit your experimental data, whether it's glycan structures, whether it's mass spectrometry data for the identification of intact glycopeptides or glycans. And we are specializing in 
manual data cu curation. Uh, we have certainly the influence of um, Uniprot to, uh, to thank for being in Switzerland. And uh, we are also uh, contributing uh, whatever is um, useful to guarantee data quality. Though this is a, a rough view of, of what we're doing. So what GLAC biology says is that at the level of the protein of the cell surface, you have proteins that are glycosylated and this glycosylated protein, so this is an N-glycan, this is an O-glycan, this is a glycan. These glycans are there, not just to decorate the outside of a cell, they are carrying a message. So they are read by other proteins, carbohydrate binding proteins, possibly called lectins as well, uh, maybe a subset of all the carbohydrate um, binding molecules. And so we are trying to capture this information. You have also glycolipids, of course, at the surface of cells, and I have not represented them because I wanted to focus a bit more on, um, on proteins. And since uh, last week, we also have glycoRNA. Um, so RNA seems to be glycosylated with uh, some uh, N-glycans. This is probably, um, this needs to be uh, um, substantiated with more experiment, but it's actually quite exciting to see that um, this is spreading to RNA. So glycosmos, as I said, at this uh, website um, has a focus on glycogenes. So the glycogenes are those genes that are encoding for enzymes that are synthesizing glycans or degrading glycans. They have also some information on glycolipids and they import the relevant pathways from reactome. So there is no restriction on organism coverage. So it's whatever is available is stored in the databases. They have also a strong focus on glycan binding. Uh, there is a profile database. So for glycan expression based on glycan array data. And there's also the glycom atlas, which is mapping the different tissues uh, of tested organism with the glycan expression. So I'll go um, briefly over that in a, in a minute. And they have for the glycomotif, the glycoepitope uh, database. Glygen has um, a restriction on organisms really focusing for the time being on Homo sapiens, uh, no, human uh, and rodents, animal models, and viruses. I mean, we all got into viruses very recently, as you might imagine. Uh, this is the um, uh, glygen uh, URL. And so they have a, a specificity on the structure browser they, that is called the, the GNOME browser. So you can actually find uh, the related structures in, um, in, in inquiring about structures. And very recently, this is really new, just out of the box, they have the, um, the glycogen sandbox, which really looks into also the glycogenes. So what are the um, um, synthetic pathways behind a structure? And they are are working on an international microarray data repository, but at the moment this is not released and should be uh, shortly. Then there's us, uh, Glycomics at Exposy, uh, that used to be that, um, uh, that form and uh, which is now that form, but this is the announcement and this is the exclusivity of this presentation. We have been molting and this is the new site. So the new site where we can talk about other resources but ours, which is 
place. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we wanted to get away from is lists, because lists are um, not telling you really uh, what's going on. You have a list of databases. This is one of the most uh, main reproaches we were told when we had the former version of glycomics at Expertise. We, you have the databases on the one hand and the tools on the other hand, but we don't really know how these relate to one another. We don't really know what the tools are, are uh, related. So we benefited from the categorization in the new version of Expertise because that was one of the main points of Expertise as well. They wanted to categorize the, uh, the resources. So we worked with the Expertise people on the categorization of, of resources. And we also thought that we should have uh, some kind of instantiate in, I mean, the possibility of instantiating the lists. So here, for instance, if you look at glycoconjugates and if I click on glycoconjugates, um, I will focus on the bubble that describes glycoconjugates. And I will navigate, I'll show you how. So my list in the middle is reduced to glycoconjugates and I have a short description for everything. So if it's a SIB resource, I have the SIB, SIB logo, no problem. But then I have a bit of um, nuance in having all the, uh, the different um, categories of tools. So you have the tools in green, you have the databases in uh, yellow and the portals in red. And here you can see that all these categories are um, ticked. So this is what we're talking about. And we can zoom in even more if we need. So I'll, I'll show you that later, but this is one way which we hope is a bit more pedagogical um, in uh, telling you about glycoinformatics resources. So our main two projects um, in Glycomics at Expasi is uh, Glyconnect. So I work with Julien Marietto, who is the main developer and really head, uh, heading all the developments of Glyconnect and Catherine, who um, he's uh, with us uh, today, who is doing the curation of the data. So we'll also, with everything changing in the new website, we're also changing logos. We're going to introduce the new logos soon. This is the homepage of Glyconnect. So um, I will, of course, uh, talk about it uh, at length later today, uh, this morning. And this is the um, website. So the second main resource that we are developing is Unilectin in collaboration with uh, Grenoble. So Francois Bonardel, who is starting a new job today, so I can't say that he's not really part of the group. He's, he just left yesterday. Um, and uh, Jala Helamadi, who is uh, taking over, but does not provide a picture, so I can't show, show you the picture of Jala. Um, so we are really working on having detailed information on lectins so that we can actually have the fuller picture of uh, glycobiology. And likewise, we'll change the um, Unilectin logo. And you can see that there's meaning in the logo with the um, glycans in the middle and the sides of the proteins. So what glycobiology says now is supported by a lot of databases that I will spend a bit of time this morning to talk about and with tools as well uh, that we develop and that we are um, storing and uh, making available in the different resources, whether glycosmos, glygen, or glycomics at ecstasy. I have to add that we are not talking, I mean, I won't be talking about another whole world of complication, which is the glycosylation of uh, bacteria uh, and plants and fungi, uh, fungi <clears throat> um, which are a bit different. So fungi, I can, I can talk about a little bit. So there's a dedicated 
a database, and I forgot to put the um, URL, I should have. Um, uh, this is um, hosted in uh, Russia. So there is this group headed by uh, Philip Tukash, who is really collecting very properly all the information on um, the glycosylation of uh, bacteria, a plant and fungi. And so I really recommend this and I can't touch over that. This is probably uh, in need of a, of a de dedicated day. And the other resource, uh, which is not yet online, but is also a very interesting um, view on the glycogenes I've mentioned that are talked about in Glycosmos and in Glygen. So not with us, because there's so many resources, there's no need to be redundant. So we'll benefit from this work. Um, uh, in all likelihood, we'll, we'll have the crosslink soon. Um, <clears throat> so this is also, there's, there's no URL yet. This is happening probably this year because it, um, it's been described at length very recently and um, the website is, uh, is available on a temporary URL, but not yet. So as you see, we have a lot to put together and uh, we're really trying to. Uh, so I certainly acknowledge my group uh, with the people I've mentioned and others I will mention in other contexts. Uh, this wouldn't be possible with very active glycobiologists who have been really involved with us in particular in shaping resources and advising us. Um, the ecstasy people I have to think and uh, Elizabeth Gasteiger is our um, middle person between Uniprot and us so that we can really have the best integration between Uniprot and our resources. Chiara and Severine are uh, the, on the ecstasy side and uh, the main people of the Glyspace Alliance are Kyoko in Japan, uh, Raja in Washington DC, and Mike T. Meyer in the CCRC, which is um, the most, uh, one of the most renowned institution for carbohydrate uh, research in um, uh, Georgia. So we have a bit of funding to do that, that I have to acknowledge, of course, and I thank you for your attention for this part. And um, you can always follow us on uh, Twitter for the updates on what we're doing. I have finished for this um, presentation. So I thought I would take um, the, the next 20 minutes or so to demo a little bit these different websites I've talked about. So to give you an idea, and then of course you perfectly, uh, um, I mean, I invite you to do it on, on your own. Um, we have here the landscape. So you can see it's very rich. The genes area, the proteins area, the glycans area. Um, here you have the binding, all um, the uh, so lectins, motifs, um, and uh, lipids are here. And you have the side menu here to show you um, how you can, by category, have a look at the information. So. Of course, the most relevant uh, for us at the moment is to be able to search glycan by text. If everything goes well, um, I had um, no, this is not going to work. So I'll just have a structure here to show you 
This is the different format of, of a structure. So maybe this is the one you most familiar with. So you can actually interrogate search with this linear code, the IUPAC code. IUPAC is usually uh, recognized. And so with this code, okay, I should be able to see something. So it doesn't want, I just picked that before. This is the demo effect by definition. So I'll try to have a, a shorter, maybe my text is too long. So I'll get rid of this UAC here and this. And see whether I have a better luck. No, I, I should go for a smaller structure. Whew. Okay, I'll just type something stupid then. Very simple. With uh, here. I still have an error, so I'll get rid of my few codes. I'll just put this extremely simple one here. And if it doesn't work, Okay, so uh, Catherine, am I making a stupid mistake? Uh, it's it's not that um, it should be IUPAC condensed. Or... Oh. Okay. I'm just I'm just checking it here. Oh yes, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I was just My... checking. Okay, we good. <sighs> I was uh, was beginning to worry. It's so you see. Even when you are aware, you make a mistake. So they, they are the different standards. And indeed, I should have, I thought I, I did IUPAC condensed and I did IUPAC extended. And so um, I'm good. So no reflection on Glycosmos, Glycosmos is working. And um, you can see here uh, my, my small um, um, uh, sugar that is there. So maybe if I, Redo the big one. I'll see the big one as well. But no, okay. I don't know why it doesn't work. Anyway, this is how you can actually um, uh, look at, uh, you, you can search by graphic. So that means that you're going to have to draw yourself um, the, um, the, the structure. So there will be a, a practical this afternoon for those who stay with us for doing it this way. Um, there's also some collaboration between Glygen and Glycosmos so that you can use the GNOME browser as well. So the GNOME browser is like this. Should be doing something that it's not doing. No, here you go. So here you just um, just have to, uh, for instance, click on. You have to know your uh, SNFG um, uh, by heart. So you have to know that this is a, a Gluknac. So you have two Gluknac, and then you go to Manos and you put two Manos three manos and you get to your core one 
Um, and so this is one way of showing from a composition all of these um, possible architectures uh, of the glycan structure, and you have each time the um, um, glycan identifier. So glycan identifiers are just starting with a G, and then you have uh, six digits, which is a mix of uh, letters and numbers after that. So this is for glycan. So here you have glycomes, and uh, you can ha actually have a look at the glycomatlas that is there and that are advertised in the presentation. And you have here, so if you want to see uh, all the glycans that are uh, in lungs, so you have the details of the glycans that you can have a look at here. And you can see that, in fact, it's shared um, by other um, tissues in the in the atlas. So it's it's a it's a nice way of navigating the data and uh, seeing where they are uh, the glycans are expressed. And you have a similar mouse and zebrafish uh, data. So this is for glycan atlas. So I'm. Um, Again, it's it's uh, not my site. Um, I'm I'm hinting on the interesting parts uh, and what we don't have in particular. So here you have the uh, glycolipids, and so uh, it's actually um, inspired from different resources that I uh, hear. You have to know about lipid classification, and so in the um, uh, you, you can have a look at all the uh, entries of glycolipids, so the uh, famous GM4. Um, and you have ba basically uh, keg information that uh, you can browse from here, but that's um, at the moment really in the making and uh, Kyoko is, is gathering information. So this is just a short overview, as, as I said. So the submission uh, are, are here. So Glytucan, you can submit new structures. Glycopost, you can submit your um, mass spectrometry uh, experiments. So there's a lot. If you're familiar, for instance, with proteomics, there's Pride. And there's JPOST, which is the Japanese version of uh, Pride, uh, or not a version, but the, the equivalent, I should say. And so Unicarm DR is also um, the uh, glycomics experiment uh, repository. And um, we, th this is happening right now. So we are in uh, running in the uh, these projects they are not fully operational we are still um, hitting some obstacles but we're trying because to be honest th there's uh, no funding to do that so um, Kyoko and uh, especially with Unicarb DR this is uh, Nicholas Carlson's project um, and myself uh, we're doing that on our spare time um, to to and Julien, of course, in, in my group. So it's it's a bit complicated, but ultimately it will be a service that uh, will run more and more smoothly and that can be used. So this is for um, Glycosmos. Then I would like to talk about Glygen. Um, so you, you can do glycan search, uh, protein search, uh, site, site search, but I, uh, so I showed you uh, how you explore uh, with, the, um, with the GNOME, but you also have the possibility 
of um, uh, building your your own composition. Uh, so it contains, uh, for instance, we will go for our uh, three hexos and uh, two two hexos. I mean, and we search the glycans and we find. <laughs> okay. So it should be an an acetyl hexosamine. You put in the. Oh, sorry. Yeah. You see, I have not. Uh, an, oh, sorry. Yes. That's why we team. So by definition, there will be quite a few. And um, the ambiguity comes also, as you can see here, you have the very well-defined linkages uh, for, for this particular one. So this is the best one in terms of precision. Uh, but this one, for instance, the this linkage is not uh, specified as beta. So there's a question mark, so this is why it exists. So these are all the glytucan IDs. Um, and of course, this matches also O-linked and uh, you can have a linear form and, and so on. And the composition version where of course you don't have linkages at all. Um, and these are um, the results of the search you can get from uh, just asking a composition. So this is from Glygen. Uh, you can, uh, so the, the, the GNOME, um, exactly the same as we saw before is, um, is here. So you can have your, um, here you see it's very quick and you have, all the possibilities and so on. Um, oh, this is okay. A new window. So of course you can look for a protein uh, which is there. So you can take the example here and search for it, and you will have the details for the protein where you have, you see that we work with Glygen, so they import some of the uh, structures that we have uh, from uh, different sources that they have. And each time you have a uh, PubMed um, reference. So if you actually click on Glyconnect, you will go to the link to Glyconnect. And uh, so this is all the information which is actually um, uh, important from um, uh, Uniprot regarding the protein, and then the uh, from uh, from the dbSNP for the variants, and uh, there's uh, Go annotation. There's also the ligands uh, when there's information. And um, also you have a different proteoform annotation and the pathways and so on. So it's a very uh, thorough description of the protein and really um, with the expression, they are using BG as a, a reference uh, and other uh, references. So you have the menu here like in the uh, Uniprot entry, and you can actually see. So they gather this information in an automatic way. So they do the integration of the data. So it's um, um, trying to really combine different sources in, in that way. So 
this is for a glygen uh, view. And the other thing I wanted to mention, so you, you, they have a site search also that is possible. Um, the um, uh, interesting part that uh, I mentioned uh, is the sandbox. Where is the sandbox on? So th this is a, a, an interesting tool also where you can actually um, uh, have your um, accession numbers mapped from one uh, resource to the, to the other. So if we uh, want to have uh, Glyconnect uh, map to um, uh, some other uh, database, there's no, actually in that sense, it would not make, but in Glycocan, so there's a possibility for, to, to get the, uh, the, the cross references from these, this mapper. But I have lost my sandbox and I don't understand where it's gone. Oh, it's here. So the sandbox is really interesting because um, you have, yeah, so the presentation uh, is, uh, is not uh, great, uh, but you can explore a particular structure so you see this uh, residue, so it actually gives you the composition, of course. It gives you the enzymes that are uh, potentially synthesizing those, um, uh, this structure. And you can actually see, okay, you can see the, um, the, the different enzymes and how the the um, these enzymes are actually acting on different structures. So again, you would need uh, we would need a probably a whole hour to to go through, and this is the Glycan people's responsibility to explain this. But I I just wanted to indicate the existence of those options so that uh, you can explore. For yourself and needless to say with if you have any questions understanding what's going on um, this is um, the uh, the glycogen people are very um, helpful the glycosmos people are very helpful and i can be an intermediary whatever um, this is um, this is glyspace alliance it works and uh, we talk about what we do uh, together and uh, share the different um, resources. So the last part, and um, my pleasure to now, uh, I need to move this to see something. So our new site is here. And as I explained, um, you have the, the complete list. So if we want to focus on portal, we go to portals and each time you have, uh, so here, this is the CFG portal, which hosts the, the resources of the consor consortium for uh, functional glycomics. So we can zoom out and so the list of portals is here with the, um, the difference. So you, you can also see some, um, some reference about CFG. So there's an article that was published. So it's an old portal um, quite uh, a while ago. Um, so you navigate in the bubbles by clicking uh, in one and each time you have the corresponding uh, boxes that are ticked and uh, you can see 
<clears throat> so for instance, in expression, uh, there's the glycom atlas that we just saw, and uh, there is uh, another tool that we have developed, which is called Vinsight. So we have the SIB logo here. If you want to see the intact glycopeptide, you see it's a very busy bubble with uh, lots of tools that are um, here uh, described. So the oldest glycomod, uh, which has been sitting on ecstasy for the last 20 years almost, uh, I think it was 20, uh, 2002 or something like that. Um, and it's uh, widely used. Uh, and so this is the most recent um, that is um, a, a new search engine released in 2020 to identify all glycopeptides. So you can always zoom out. Here we have glygen and glyconnect as the uh, glycoprotein related. So this is the glycoprotein bubble here. And uh, we have information on glycosides with also different resources described here. So you see the correspondence between the two, um, I mean, the, three, the list that updates, the categories that are ticked, the, um, the bubbles that are zoomed in or zoomed out uh, on. And um, this is hopefully uh, a, a more pedagogical way of showing the resources in glycoinformatics. So the next stage, so stay tuned because next month we'll have the um, not, uh, I mean, we'll have the information linked. That is which database is calling which tool and cross-referencing cross -referencing which other database, which is the key information in understanding. So these bubbles are not independent and we need another representation to show that and we're working at it. We close to the end and you'll have this information in the next release of the website um, at the end of June. Okay, so I think that's a lot already. And I'm ready to take questions if you have any. <laughs>